Now we combine all the ingredients that we have so far to the ISLM PC model. So we combine the equilibrium of the goods market and the money market, which um, are already in equilibrium in the short run, with equilibrium on the labor market, which um, needs some time to adjust. So the ISLM PC model is then a model for the short and medium run, actually. To be able to analyze this, we denote the labor force by L, which means that employment is given as the labor force times one minus the unemployment rate, because that's then, of course, everybody who is in employment. Production happens as um, we mentioned before. So total output is produced with labor only. So employment is um, here. We have a linear production function and we can plug in this expression from above. So output is equal to the labor force multiplied by one minus the unemployment rate. We can rewrite this for the natural level of um, output um, with the natural level of unemployment. And this natural level of output is also often uh, interpreted or um, said to be the potential output level of an economy. And from this, we can then derive the output gap which in means which is actual output minus uh, natural output. And this would be equal to the negative of the current unemployment rate from the natural unemployment rate. So that's just the deviation of um, this expression here uh, from this expression here. And we plug uh, this in and we get an expression for this output gap in terms of the deviation of the unemployment rate from the natural unemployment rate. And we see that whenever the unemployment rate is below its natural level, output is above its natural level and vice versa. From the previous result, we can then easily derive by reformulation an expression for the deviation of the current unemployment rate from the natural unemployment rate in terms of the deviation from actual, uh, between actual output and natural output. And then we can plug this into the Phillips curve with adaptive expectations. And we would get, so that was what we had at the end of the chapter on the Phillips curve. And we plug this expression in for the difference between the unemployment rate and the natural unemployment rate. And then we get an expression for the change in inflation over time as depending on the output gap. So if the output gap is uh, positive, so if a current output is above its natural level, there are inflationary pressures. So inflation uh, would tend to be above its previous level. And the last bit that we need to complete the ISLMPC model is then to rewrite um, the LM curve actually in terms of the real interest rate. But the real interest rate is the nominal interest rate minus the infl uh, expected inflation rate. So now we summarize the model so far, the ISLM PC model, where we have the IS curve, where output or income is equal to consumption plus investment of firms and plus governmental consumption expenditures. But now the nominal interest rate here is just expressed as the real interest rate plus the expected rate of inflation. Then we have the LM curve, where the central bank targets now a real interest rate, actually. And the real interest rate is the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate. And finally, we have the, um, uh, the Phillips curve, as we've um, shown it on the previous slide, where we have the difference between actual inflation and expected inflation as a function of the output gap in the economy. So whenever output is above its natural level, we would have that actual um, inflation would be above um, the expected uh, inflation uh, if inflation uh, expectations are adaptive, for example, or anchored. Then we again use a graph to analyze the dynamics. And in the next um, figures, we show this graph and it's drawn for the case of adaptive or naive expectations. In the graphical depiction of the ISLM PC model, we have the ISLM part or the short run part in the upper diagram and the Phillips curve relationship or the short to medium run part in the lower diagram. In the upper diagram, we have the IS curve and the LM curve and the short run equilibrium at point A 
at an interest rate of Rs, where S stands for the short run, and an income level or output level of Ys. So when we include the Phillips curve here, it's clear that this short run equilibrium is associated with a positive output gap in the sense that actual output is above its natural level. The natural output level would be at the point where inflation expectations and actual inflation coincide, such that the difference is zero, and the Phillips curve actually intersects with this um, line here. So we see the short run equilibrium is associated with a situation in which actual inflation is above expected inflation. So if inflation should not spiral out of control, pressures would mount on the central bank to increase the real interest rate actually. So increase the nominal interest rate above um, the increase in inflation and that's by having contractionary monetary policy. So therefore the central bank would shift the LM curve upwards basically such that um, the economy would end up at point B, where again, inflation expectations and actual inflation coincide. The actual output level is at the natural output level or potential output level, and there are no inflationary or deflationary pressures. And during this transition, the economy would adjust by having um, um, uh, kind of this, the inflation expectations and actual inflation then start again to coincide and the inflation increase starts to level off. Now, after the contractionary monetary policy, inflation is constant again. That's what we see here in this equilibrium B. But with only with anchored expectations would the inflation rate be again as high as um, before we had uh, the overheating of the economy. So before the economy started to have an actual output level above its natural output level, or in other words, a positive output gap. <clears throat> With adaptive expectations, the inflation rate would then be above its pre-overheating rate. And if the economy wants, uh, if the central bank wants to bring the inflation rate back to the pre-overheating um, inflation rate, it would actually have to generate a short run recession and increase the interest rate even further than uh, to this uh, medium run equilibrium B for a certain time period up <coughs> to point C, such that actual inflation <coughs> would be below expected inflation for some period and only then the economy could move back to the new medium run equilibrium where inflation expectations and actual inflation are again um, uh, the same. So with adaptive expectations, the central bank would have to um, create a short run recession actually to bring inflation down to the pre um, overheating period. And only with anchored inflation, uh, it would suffice to bring the economy back to equilibrium B um, and the inflation rate would not be higher than its pre overheating rate. Now we use this framework to analyze what happens in case of a government that wants to reduce the fiscal deficit. We assume that the economy is initially at the equilibrium that is consistent with um, the uh, medium run equilibrium so that uh, the actual output is at the level of potential output and so on and so forth. And then the government reduces governmental consumption expenditures and or it increases the taxes. This basically shifts the IS curve inwards, as we see in the next figure here. And we start again here in the upper part with the uh, short description of the short run, the ISLM part, and the lower diagram with the description of the medium run, uh, in which when we have the medium run equilibrium, actual inflation would be equal to expected inflation. So what we see here is that initially this contractionary fiscal policy shifts the IS curve from IS1 to IS2. And the economy would then in the short run have an output level that is below the natural output level or the output level of the medium run as I've denoted it here in this graph. So in this case then, um, the actual inflation rate would be below the expected inflation rate. And this could basically lead to the situation of an ever declining inflation rate, and in the worst case, even to deflationary pressures. <clears throat>
So that means that the central bank would be induced to react in some way by decreasing the real interest rate. So in this graph then here we have that the central bank decreases the real interest rate to RM, which is then again the interest rate that is consistent with the new medium run equilibrium in which um, actual output is equal to uh, potential output or a medium run output as I denoted it um, here. So then the economy would converge uh, back from this uh, deflationary um, recession actually towards the medium run equilibrium. To summarize, we have seen that we can integrate the Phillips curve into the ISLM model and this allows us to have a framework uh, to analyze longer time periods. So the ISLM part would be suitable to analyze the very short run and short run uh, part, and the Phillips curve part would be able to analyze the short run to medium run uh, part, basically. What we've seen is that there are forces pushing the economy back to potential output or natural output and uh, the situation where the actual unemployment rate is equal to the natural unemployment rate. The details then depend on how inflation expectations are formed. If they are anchored, then policymakers tend to have more room for maneuvering than with adaptive uh, or naive expectations. So it's always a good idea in this context to um, have expectations anchored, and that's what actually central banks tried to do over the last decades everywhere in the world. With rational expectations and perfect foresight, the medium run would actually be reached very fast and policy would mostly be ineffective even in the short run. Actually, in reality, hybrid expectations are um, uh, more realistic uh, than the extreme cases that we have mentioned above. So it's most likely that the share of the population adheres to rational expectations, another share to adaptive expectations, and another share might have expectations anchored. And uh, the uh, size of these shares actually determine how uh, policies work at the macroeconomic level.